love, not that we love God, but he loves us and sent his son as a totally sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, and uh, good morning to Generation Sunday, and good morning to Remembrance Sunday. Um, so, team's going to come and lead us in some songs, uh, and let's worship together. Morning. Uh, do you want to stand if you can? so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise and to know the saith the Lord Jesus Jesus Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him. To trust his cleansing blood and in simple faith to plunge me neath the healing cleansing flood. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved him. Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. I'm so glad I learned to trust Him. I'm so glad I learned to trust Thee, precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that Thou art with me, will be with me to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I proved Him for. Oh, Jesus, oh, for grace 
from William it just kind of came to him and he sang it the whole journey so here we are you're the God of the city 
You're the king of these people. You're the Lord of this nation. You are. You're the light in this darkness. You're the hope to the hopeless. You're the peace to the restless. You are. There is no one like God. No one like God, God. Greater things have yet to come. Greater things are still to be done in this city. Greater things have yet to come. Greater things are still to be done here. You're the God of this city, you're the King of this people, you're the Lord of this nation, you are. You're the light in this darkness, you're the hope to the hopeless, you're the peace to the restless, you are. No one like God, God. There is no one like God, God. Greater things have yet to come. Greater things are still to be done in this city. Um, I'm going to come, uh, well, I'll do the announcements now, if that's okay. Right? Good morning, everyone. I know some people floated in there as we were, um, as we were starting to sing together. Um, so, good morning. And uh, there's some people look really smart in their uniforms, and uh, that's really good. That's nice. And I'm not talking to the adults on that one. Um, can I let you into a secret? We have a couple of birthdays. And today we had some cakes, so there will be cake afterwards. But I'm not looking at Jenna, but she's celebrating a big birthday this week. And I'm not looking at Jesse. Uh, he has a big birthday today. So um, um, uh, happy birthday to, to those as well. And we're going to have cake afterwards. <laughs> Older and wiser. Hmm? Isn't that it? Okay, let me give you the announcements for today. Uh, um, tonight we are here at 6.30, and um, tonight is a chance to probably sing that, a song like that song tonight and, 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 um, and hear a wee bit more about the story of why someone would carry uh, a song like that uh, in their hearts. So I want you to come tonight. If there's been a song or there's been a prayer or there's been something um, over yesterday or even that you've been carrying with you uh, over the last wee while that you feel 
that God has spoken to you. It might be something that you think small, but actually it can be something that's quite big for someone else. And so come with that. Come with your song, if you have a song, um, and, and you don't have to particularly use the, the worship team to sing that song. We can use uh, YouTube and uh, uh, play the song here. So please feed that back to us um, as we come together. And, um, and there's some things that we want to pray, uh, some people we want to pray for uh, tonight. We're not going to pray for everybody that's on our list, um, uh, that was on our list yesterday and all the areas that we tried to cover in our prayer time yesterday, but there is some specific things that we want to, to end our night off with praying for. And maybe that's you, that you would like some prayer also. So come tonight. Pray with us. Come if you also if you've got something to share, please free free to do that and feed that back to us. Um, so that's tonight, and then after that, the teenage girls are heading round to Amy's house, and after that, the teenage boys are heading round to Andrew and Lila's house. No, oh here, sorry, here they're going to be here. Sorry, that's good. Um, you'll not see Andrew's Christmas tree. Um, sorry, Andrew, I let that slip that he's got a Christmas tree up already. Anyway. Uh, tomorrow night, uh, ladies, you're all getting together at uh, Nicola and David's house, um, and uh, so that'll be good for you get ladies to get together at 8 o'clock. Now, Wednesday night, we're back here again, um, and uh, I just want to encourage you, even if you're not part of what's happening on Wednesday nights, some of those stories within the book that we're reading at the moment are hugely inspirational. And so I read, uh, this morning, I read chapter 5 again, and... Um, uh, there's some stories within that of people who are faced with extreme difficulties um, uh, and, and just you, you find encouragement for yourself as you read those stories and how God has been faithful in the midst of that. So that's that uh, on Wednesday night. And then looking forward to two things. One is uh, next weekend on Saturday, the Home for Good event is in Emmanuel Church or over at Emmanuel Church in Lurgan. Um, we'll put up a wee bit of details about that. Some are going, um, but that might be something that uh, you want to go along to as well. And then looking forward to, towards the end of the month, you know every year we have like what you call a bit of a Thanksgiving or a fair or um, here, an, it's an open morning on the Saturday morning here at the church. It's usually about from 10 o'clock, it's from 10 o'clock to 2, so there'll be some stalls in here and um, we're food and it's just a chance to be part of our community um, but uh, so I want to announce that that's on the 30th uh, Saturday morning uh, the 30th of um, November we're in November oh my goodness um, isn't it hard to believe uh, well it isn't because Andrew's got his Christmas tree up um, anyway uh, so that morning uh, if you can come along uh, you might want to help out, but just come along and be part of what's happening that morning. We'll have some food and there'll be coffee and there'll be a chance to, to get to know some of our community a bit better. But the purpose really in that is that the um, year seven in, in the Hardy School will have a stall here and they're trying to raise some money. So there'll be lots happening uh, with, all, with all the other stalls that are going to be here as well. Bit of a Christmas fair, bit of an outreach to the village, a bit of a chance just to, to support uh, uh, our community and our school in some way or another. So put that in your diary. And that's me finished. And it's great to see Eli with us, isn't it? It's good to see Eli. Eli always brings a wee bit of an energy with him. And um, uh, Eli, come and share with us and then uh, lead us around our time of communion. And then the praise team is going to come and sing as we share that out. So however that works. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's lovely to see you all as well. Um, and some new faces as well. I've been asked, Neville's asked me to speak. Can I put this up a bit? to talk about communion um, and so I'm just gonna it might be a bit messy I haven't had a lot of time to pr prepare at all but if you want to turn to John 17 if you have your Bibles or your phones um, John 17 20 I'll read it if you can catch up it says my prayer is not for them alone, talking about the disciples. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, 
Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I've given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world the main reason why we're doing this. Um, I went to Jordan this year, a couple months back, and saw our friend Tamero, and we were invited over to a family's house there from Assyria in Iran, um, or they're an Assyrian family in Iran, but they've come down to Jordan and they basically invited us over for food. And it just made me realize how intimate eating together is. And, and maybe not for us, maybe it hasn't become a massive thing for us, um, but I think we all know that eating together is a massive thing. And I think for other cultures, even being hosts um, to, to, to serve food is than being invited over. And I think this is the culture of what we're reading here when they have the Passover, when they have, sorry, when they have the, uh, the meal together. It was so intimate. Um, and so, yeah, the first thing about being intimate with each other, um, I think, yeah, that speaks in itself about being one with each other. But then also the fact that he says, I'm not going to have this, he's, when he's having the Last Supper together, he said, I'm not going to have this again with you until I come back, until, the, um, until it's fulfilled in the kingdom. And then you see when after he's met a few disciples on the Emmaus Road and then he eats with them again. And it says, um, I'll read it here. He says, Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. So that it had to reach that level in, of intimacy together when they're eating together. And then they realized this was Jesus. Um, and so maybe just have that posture when you're having the bread, when you're having the juice or the wine. It's... And intimacy with each other. He's called us to eat together, to have communion with each other, but also deeply have communion with, with Jesus. Um, when we break the bread, realizing that that is when we're, you know, meeting with Jesus, if that makes sense. Neville, will you lead us? I don't know what we're doing from now. Oh, I'm going to pray. Yeah? Okay, yes. Um, yeah, if you want to bow your heads or however you want to get close to the Lord. Lord, I thank you so much for this church. I thank you so much for how they've welcomed me time and time again, even though I've abandoned them. <laughs> um, they've welcomed me. And, and yeah, this is what you want your family to be um, as one, Lord. I thank you for every single one of them. I pray from the youngest to the oldest. I pray that we will, I pray for this church that you will bless them and help them to be. Uh, one with each other as you are one with the Father, Lord. That you will create such a unity in between them, Lord. Um, in every single group that they have outside of Sunday. Um, yeah, will you just create that unity? I pray as we take this um, bread and this wine, Lord, that we will hear from you. I pray, I, I've heard so many stories of healings, Lord, when communion is taken. I pray for healing today whether it's internally or externally, I pray for healing today, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. take uh, the emblems as you want to, whenever you wish, right? I call out to you. 
I call out to you again and again. You are my rock in times of trouble. You lift me up when I fall down. Oh, through the storm, your love the anchor. Faithful one, so unchanging, ageless one, you're my rock of peace, Lord. I call out to you again and again. I call out to you in times of trouble. You lift me. You are my rock in times of trouble. You lift me up when I fall down. Oh, through the storm, your Good morning. Uh, Generation Sunday, so that can only mean one thing. It is quiz time. So, um, this week, I can't even pretend I'm afraid that there's a tenuous link, but there's words in the quiz. This was Andrew's suggestion. Words in the quiz, we're talking about how we speak, so there we go. Um, today's quiz is all about identifying the country by the landmark. So, you'll have three options. I think they might be labelled A, B and C, but we'll go for one, two or three. So hold up your answer if you think it's one, two or three. So Daniel, take it away. So can you guess the country? Question number one. Here we go. 
What country does this landmark, is, which country is it situated in? Is it number one, China, two, the USA, or is it three, France? Okay, pretty confident on number three? Yes, well done. Give yourself a point if you got that right. Oh, this one. This is sort of tied into what's going to be spoken about. Let's see. Is it Peru, Egypt, Italy? One, two, or three? Mostly twos? Well done. Give yourself another point if you got that right. Oh, this one's maybe a wee bit trickier, is it? Let's see. What could this one be? Is it China, Japan, or India? What do we think? Oh. One, two, three. China. It's the Great Wall of China. Well done. Okay. Number four. This lovely statue, is it in the USA? Is it in France? Or is it in Canada? One. Bonus point if you knew it was a gift from France to the USA. Okay, this landmark is found in... India, Pakistan, or Bangladesh? What do we think? A lot of ones, I've seen a lot of ones. Yes, well done, the Taj Mahal. Okay, this looks like the tallest building in the world. Do we know where that's located? Is it Australia? Is it Russia? Or is it the UAE, the United Arab Emirates? What do we think, one, two, or three? Three, and it's the Burj Khalifa for a bonus point. Now this statue, Christ the Redeemer statue, do we know where that is? Is it China, Brazil, or the USA? One, two, or three? Brazil unusual building, or unusual skyline. Is it in China? Is it in the USA? Or is it in France? What do we think? Hmm, it's a bit harder, isn't it? Hmm, China. It's the Shanghai Tower, okay. This very fancy building here. What do we think? Is it in Saudi Arabia? Is it in Turkey or is it in the UAE? What do we think? A bit trickier, isn't it, this one? Mm, yay. Well done if you got that right. Number three, you got the point. Okay. Where do we think this one is? These ancient ruins. Are they in Peru, Mexico, or Brazil? Okay, we we're mixed some ones and twos, ones and twos. Peru, well done, Machu Picchu. Mm hmm. Okay, there's some people in the room who have been to this, I know. <laughs> so they should get this right. Keep an eye out. Is it in Jordan? Is it in Egypt? Or is it Greece? What do we think? We want more mixed results. I think we've got a bit of everything in the room. Let's see. Jordan, well done. Okay, this slightly leaning tower, where do we find that? Is it Italy, Spain, or Greece? Let's see, what's the answer? Italy, the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Okay, another ancient ruin. Where do we think this is? Is it Greece? Is it Italy? Or is it Spain? Ooh, you think Spain? Okay, a bit more mixed. Let me see. Italy as well, yes, that was a bit of a trick to Italy in a row. Well done, if you can add up your scores and give yourself all the points. And over to Neil. <laughs> Good stuff, thank you, Amy. Um, Amy sold herself short there, it's very well linked. Because uh, William's going to come and give us a few minutes about Egypt. Um, and then uh, Dad come and... Uh, Give us a couple of minutes about Jordan um, and Iraq. You didn't get in Iraq. If you had gotten Iraq one in there, that would have been amazing. Um, so I suppose it's like, a really great chance for us on Generation Sunday. Uh, I think it's a good chance for a bit of a family. Come on ahead, William. A bit of a family check-in. And uh, I think it's great just that, that our kids get to see and know where, where some of our family have been. Um, because there is, 
and maybe not some of the younger ones, but there is option for mission trips as part of this family, whether it's to Zambia over the summer, whether it's um, to Granada with the, with the teams to Spain, um, or, or, or whether as you get older, a chance to go and be part of teams that are heading all over the world. Um, we, want to, we want our kids to be a part of this for, uh, as, for, from as early as possible. Sorry, William. Keep standing here. Uh, like for us to bring Caleb and Eli, and I know for Nicola the same, to bring Daniel and, and Joshua on a on a mission trip is just been it was just remarkable. Whenever they were eight years old, eight nine years old, um, so it's good for us to be in the room as as William just shares a wee bit about uh, about his experience in Egypt and uh, what the Lord was doing. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, yeah, please. Um, so yeah, so we arrived. Um, in Egypt on the Monday night and we spent a couple of days there with Ronnie, Carolyn, Paul Woods and Homero and Alison, um, my wife. And I suppose we, we had the opportunity of connecting with some believers, some Christians in, in, uh, in Cairo, the capital. And it was really, to me anyway, it was a, quite a thrilling experience uh, meeting those people face to face and sitting with them and like, like Eli said, eating with them and praying with them and just uh, feeling, feeling God's presence with us and just exploring and learning more about the challenges that the church in Egypt is, is, is facing. So if some of you maybe don't quite know the detail, in Egypt, Egypt is a country of 90-something million people, nearly 100 million people, out of which 10% of them are Christian in a church and multiple churches, multiple denominations. And I suppose the two things that maybe stood out uh, to me anyway, uh, the first one was the, the extreme need that there is, hunger and thirst for the word, first of all, and also practical physical needs that are, are needed there. Um, and, and by that, I don't mean, you know, you know th th this is, we're, we're talking about a completely different level of poverty there. Um, we're talking about people who have very, very little by, by means of material possessions. Um, I know I was just maybe listening and reflecting a little bit in the last few days to one of the pastors that we've, uh, we had had the privilege of meeting there. And, and in his service, he was, he was just saying how sometimes all of us naturally, when we're 99% comfortable or 99% at rest, we often try and focus on the 1% of suffering and and, and try and bring that right in front of us. But yet, there's so much for us to be thankful for and to be in deep sense of gratitude for God's goodness to us. Um, there are many who are suffering quite deeply. And I suppose the second thing that stood to me wasn't just the, the physical suffering, but rather the, the suffering of, of, of people who have encountered Jesus and has come to him in a Muslim country where there is huge pressure, huge persecution, and it was amazing to meet examples of uh, brothers and sisters there who have actually working hugely in secret to try and, uh, to try and, and help support God's work in, in, in this land with all the pressures that come with it. And I'm, I'm speaking of those people are putting their reputation, they're putting their resources, they're putting their name, they're putting their families at risk to try and support and, and promote the work of the church there. So um, it was really a thrilling experience and it was amazing for us to hear stories and watch videos and, and hear firsthand about what God is doing there and to see the passion and the deep sense of, of, of I don't want to say duty, but rather love deep sense of love of the church there trying to minister to their countrymen in areas where there is no running water there is no electricity there is huge need there is no local businesses where people can work go and work at where there is disease there is huge pressures and yet to be reminded with those people's affection for them and saying that these are also children of god and they require our prayer our love and our support uh, so uh, having having spent a couple of days there and visiting my mother as well which others were very kind to do that it made her day really and uh, we sort of um spent a day uh, sightseeing for a bit and and um we met another uh, minister who has been helping the persecuted church there and then after that we separated and went to 
some of us came back home and some went to Iraq and Jordan. So, Thanks, William. Um, I really appreciate uh, I've had a couple of chats with William since he came back and uh, just really value what he's carried back home with a, with a heart for the church. And sometimes we get caught up with stuff here that we can so easily forget what's going on and so what Williams carry back I think is really important that we just are, are praying what, what the next uh, the, the next steps are in, ter in terms of like how we can be a blessing to to uh, to Egypt and also to Jordan and Iraq dad come on ahead um, some new territory that uh, we're able to step into over the last week or so so tell us about that thank you son Hey, thanks to William for sharing. I have just a few photographs that I'm going to talk my way through as well. Uh, if you're watching online, unfortunately we cannot put the photographs to the public domain, but uh, we're ready, Daniel. So our, my first photograph is just confirming some of the things that uh, William has mentioned there. There we go. There's William's mum. So for us, that was the highlight. <laughs> First morning that we were there to go and visit uh, William's mum in her nursing care home, and it was a great joy. So uh, William has already mentioned there was Paul with us, and Hamero joined us. He travelled directly from Brazil to be with us for the whole duration of our trip. So next one, Daniel. Uh, again, it's amazing how God opens doors of opportunity. Some chance meetings turn out to be something amazing, and that's what you're going to see in these photographs. The girl on the right is part of a, a Christian ministry that actually works into the nursing home where William's mum was, and that's where the connection has been made, because they do a lot of work to try and help uh, the families that William has mentioned. So you're going to hear more about that. For, Carolyn's not here. We have, we have 30 people for, for lunch the day, day, so that's why Carolyn's not here. But it was a real joy for Carolyn and I to spend time with William and Alison. And uh, it's something special whenever you're working with somebody who actually comes from that nation. And uh, so it was great to see how God has opened these doors with people that even William and Alison didn't know a couple of years ago. So we thank God for these amazing connections. Okay. And then we also had the joy of meeting this guy on the left. He's a friend of Homero's. He works with Voices of the Martyrs with the persecuted church in Egypt. And again, at another time, we'll have more time to tell you stories, but some amazing uh, things that he's done. And this is William's brother, third from left, is uh, Philip. So he's a great guy and was very, very hospitable and generous to us during our time there. And we had dinner here. Uh, we're not at the table now, but a lot of our photographs are around the table. So uh, we had dinner on the Nile, which was a beautiful experience. Okay, Daniel, next one. There we go. I knew there was a table coming up soon. So that was our farewell meal in Egypt. And as William said, we were heading, Paul, Carlin, and myself with Homero were heading on into Iraq, which was, again, new, new ground for us. First time in Iraq. And that's us in the city of Erbil, where we arrived uh, on last Thursday week ago. And we are going to meet Pastor Darius. This guy is a me. I hope someday you all get a chance to meet him. He's an amazing guy. He's a Muslim background believer. He was absolutely battered. If, if you heard of sharing his testimony, it's something that's really heart-touching, how much this guy has went through to hold to his faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, so we're delighted that God connected us. And that's from Salar. Do everybody remember Salar that came to church for a while? Salar was through the connection that we had with one of the young girls that came to stay with us at the castle as a refugee from Syria. So this amazing, uh, whenever I asked Salar how he came to the Lord, and it was Pastor Darius that led him to the Lord. And so we made connection with Darius, and it was a great joy for us to spend time with him in Iraq. Again, they're doing an amazing work. And this is Salar's mum. So the mums are important. Don't ever forget that. Generation Sunday, mums are important. Uh, and we were delighted that we had the chance to meet Salar's mum and uh, pray with her as well. 
Nicola's favourite part of that photograph was that wee girl at the far end, peeping around the corner. And then that's back in, in Darius's home. And the next photograph, Daniel will just show the family. Darius has sent me that, and he's asked me to put that photograph up in my office. So, uh, Nicola, can you, re- can you get that into the office? We're, we've moved to a new office, so... Uh, but please do remember in your prayers, it's good that you can remember, you see a face, it's easier to remember to pray for Darius and his wife, doing amazing work for the Lord in Iraq. They're, they're all Syrian refugees, so it's not, it's not an easy place for them, but uh, serving the Lord faithfully. And then from there, uh, last Sunday morning, we flew from Erbil back to Amman, and this is a drop-in base in Jordan. Paul's leading us in, in worship there. And uh, again, we encourage you, if you've never been to Homero's place in Jordan, there's a warm welcome waiting for you there in Amman. We had the joy to meet. The next photograph is Hugo. Hugo's actually the boyfriend of the daughter, if you get this all, of Ali and Yvonne that run our base in Turkey. And so he is a real heart for mission. And he's in Amman learning Arabic. So a young guy from England, he's sacrificed a lot. But just to meet him and to talk with him, he's a great heart. And uh, it'll be exciting to see how God continues to lead him in, in the future. And then we have a table. So that's our, that's our last supper in, uh, in Jordan. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned tables. Eli, I've forgotten to learn. You said that much of our photographs are, are taken around tables, but uh, do please remember that uh, Hayel and Amanda spent three months with us. Many would probably recognise them, Amero and Deborah, that are still serving the God, serving the Lord in Amman under the drop-in umbrella. And uh, Paul, Paul has loads of photographs, and if you want to get a chat with him later, he can give you his version of a mission trip in the Middle East. Okay, so thank, I'm glad that all this is in front of the children, the boys and girls in Generation Sunday. So you set your heart that someday you're going to go on a mission trip. Okay, thank you very much. Good job. Yeah, so um, Father, we, we thank you for what we've seen and for what we've heard. And, and uh, God, I just pray that there would be a, a story or an image or a person that, uh, that all of us would just um, carry away from this morning, uh, Darius and his family, uh, William's mum, Summer, God, all those that we've, come, that we've met through, through a picture on a screen. God, but do more than that. God, as we, uh, as we would see these people and hear part of a glimpse of their story, God, that you would um, help, us to, help us to hold them in prayer. Thank you for brothers and sisters across the world. Thank you for the family of God, the diverse family of God that ranges across the whole earth. And we pray that even today, as they meet, as they worship, God, some in, in places of difficulty, somewhere it's not easy, somewhere where it's uh, a real act of sacrifice to even gather. We pray that you would be particularly close to them today. You'd encounter them with your presence, God. You'd meet with them in a, in a special way across the nations of the world, God. But we think of those that we've talked, uh, reflected on this morning. Um, bless them, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, I know time's away. Give me five minutes. Um, a couple of thoughts around, uh, just to continue with our theme around words and the importance of our words. Um, last week we looked at uh, last week we, we looked at a story in Acts chapter three, um, the story of this man who for forty years, forty years had st- had sat had been la- led at the temple gate, the entrance to the temple. And over and over again, he was bypassed for year after year, day after day, and uh, until there was this beautiful moment with Peter and John. And Peter and John have just had this experience of Pentecost where the Spirit has been poured out. And something about, uh, something we reflected on last week is that the Holy Spirit being poured out, the Holy Spirit being poured out causes us to see things differently. And once we see things differently, it completely transforms the way we speak about people and the way we speak to people. And that's what has seemed to have taken place in this story of the, of the lame man at the temple gate, beautiful. 
the Holy Spirit had been poured out, and now Peter and John, even though they probably walked past this man week after week as they made their way into the temple, all of a sudden they've seen him differently. And they stop and they tell the man, look at us. Like, lift your head. You shouldn't have to walk with this level of shame and undignified living. Like, look at us. We have nothing else to give you but, but Jesus. And so, just something, just something so beautiful about that story. And I've just found myself still around um, Acts, chapter, Acts chapter 2 and, and 3 uh, the, the, at Pentecost. The effect of the Spirit being poured out. In effect, the birth of the church. So here we have in Acts chapter 2, and at the end today we're going to celebrate, we're going to have cake for, for the, the birth of Jenna and Jesse. And, uh, but here's, the, here's a moment, the birth of the early church, and we see their first words. We see the first words of the early church in Acts chapter 2, when the Spirit has been poured out, and they began to speak in a way that people who had previously never understood them before began to understand them. The words that they began to use as the Spirit was poured out, people around began to hear. People with, who had previously never understood what was being said were now understanding. And so this is a really beautiful moment. And so I know it's a silly video, but um, for those maybe who are a bit older, you maybe remember Abbott and Costello, an uh, old comedy act. And uh, they did this, they had done this sketch a number of years ago. Um, but that, their sketch was too long. Um, but Jimmy Kimmel and a few of his comedy friends, they did, a, did another version of it. So um, Daniel hopefully is going to show this couple of minute video. I'll come back for a couple of minutes and then we'll be, and then we'll be done. It's very simple. This fella's actual name is who? W-H-O. And this fella's actual given birth name is what? W-H-A-T. Well, that clears it up. Why didn't you just say that in the first place? But wait, who are you? I don't know. The Bernice! Bernice! Uh, a silly video, but all of that to try and say how easy it is to how easy it is to be, and sometimes at times speaking, speaking the same language, but not understanding each other. And so it brought me back to, in some strange way, it brought me back, so I was reflecting on, on Acts 2, brought me back to a place where we have been before, to the Tower of Babel, and because of idolatry, because of people wanting to do their own thing, because of people, like, regardless of the consequences, idolatry made, meant that they just wanted to do their own thing, wanted to meet their own preferences, do whatever it was that they wanted. And because of, because of that moment in Genesis chapter 11, the languages of the people were confused. And humanity, I just felt to me, as I was feeling for myself praying even yesterday, it just felt like humanity, and as I think of like what's going on in our, in our media, all has taken place this week, how humanity, even from that moment in Genesis chapter 11, has struggled to be in conversation, has struggled to understand each other ever since. Language has, has confused because of idolatry. The languages of the people were confused and humanity has struggled to be in conversation ever since. Humanity has struggled to understand each other ever since. But it's why the, this moment in Acts chapter 2 is so significant. Communication can be, can be difficult. Communication can be hard. And as... The third guy, Jerry Senfeld, came on and, and tried to communicate as best as he could about what everybody else had missed. Uh, sometimes not listening to what others are saying makes communication more difficult uh, than, it, than it needs to be. And so Acts chapter 2 has just been a really significant moment as I've been reflecting on, on this this week. I've even thought about the, the places that the guys have been over the last number of days. Because Acts chapter 2 for me has just felt like it is watching the church learn to speak again. It's been watching the church learn to speak again. Ability to speak in a way that others around us can understand. 
And it just felt to me again, just a, a, like just revitalized something to me about the importance of what we're talking about on Sunday. Because everything was con- everything went into confusion. Everything went awry because of our misunderstanding, of our miscommunication with each other. And to, in order to restore that, that is the kindness of God. It's the goodness of the Spirit that, uh, that he would pour himself out in a way that the first thing to happen was an ability to speak in a way that others around them were now able to understand. We still live, we still battle with this you do you type of culture. You want to do your own thing, go your own way. That was the idolatry of Babel. That's what caused us to misunderstand each other. And the birth of the early church was just changing everything. Because the idea of being part of the family of God is that we're no longer, it's not, we're, we're not building on personal preferences. We're not building on you do you. We're building on Christ. And that building on Christ, that is, to be honest, that has little to do with our own individual tastes, with our own individual um, preferences. And for the early church, I love what Eli shared this morning, for the early church, uh, their understanding their understanding was to, that to be saved into Jesus was to be saved in the community. Um, and, and we could go through so much of Paul's letters, because I think especially for Paul that there was no concept uh, that one could follow Jesus outside of the community of faith, outside of the church. I love what Roger Olson says. He says that there is no hint of lone range Christianity anywhere in the New Testament. There's no suggestion that a person can be vitally united with Christ and growing spiritually apart from the church. And so we, we see Paul, the instigator of so much of that early church development, the early church planting, and the, the growth of the early church. And he went to great lengths to get to know people. He went to great lengths to be incredibly cautious about what he said, when he said it, and how he said it. And so 1 Corinthians chapter 9 is what we touched on briefly last week. And we've seen how Paul, in order to build trust, in order to be able to speak to people, he immersed himself in their culture. Again, that's why it's amazing to hear some of the stories of, 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 uh, of some of the guys that have been on mission trips. And, and we hear it regular here, what it looks like, what happens when we, when we immerse ourselves in people's cultures, when we immerse ourselves in their lives, when we commit ourselves to sitting around a table for a long period of time. And that's what I really value again about Paul. Because Galatians chapter 1 verse 18 tells us that Paul, after three years, after three years of just like getting the, this, he had this incredible encounter with God. And for three years he went off and, uh, and just deepened that relationship. Like got caught up in the calling that God had for him. And then he made his way to, to meet, with, um, meet with Peter in Galatia. And we're told in ver- verse 18 of the first chapter that Paul acquainted himself Paul acquainted himself with Peter. But as I like, sometimes like to do, this, the, the idea of acquainted is like it is so weak to compare to what's going on here. Because Paul spent 15 days, we're told 15 days acquainting himself. But it's, it's so much more than that. Um, the, the, the idea of this historio, or however way you pronounce that in the Greek, it was uh, like just a deep getting to know. It was so much deeper than just an, getting an acquaintance. It was a deep getting to know. Eugene Peterson, I think, in, in, uh, in his tra- paraphrasing of Galatians, um, talks about swapping stories. And that's what, just, that, that's what they, Paul knew the building of the church was going to look like. It can't be done on your own, and it has to be done around tables. It has to be done investing yourselves into the lives of one another. It is John 17 stuff, that you would be one as me and the Father are one. For Paul, um, community was the context where followers of Jesus learned to speak again. The early church, the point out of Pentecost was where the church learned to speak again. And for Paul, this was the community. This was the community, the context. The community was the context where followers of Jesus learned to speak again, learned to speak truth, learned to speak life. And last week we talked about carrying one another's burdens. And uh, the only way that we can carry one another's burdens is if you first of all, you first of all need to know what is the burdens. And there will be something that will inevitably happen whenever you, uh, you immerse yourself in somebody's life and somebody's story. Whenever you do what Paul was doing there in, in, in uh, those 15 days, I'm not saying like go and 
move in with somebody for 15 days. But that idea of like just swapping stories, that idea of visiting in order to get to truly know. And, uh, and once you begin to know what burdens somebody, it cannot help but affect how you see them. And once it begins to, uh, and there's just been glimpses of that, I felt like there's just been glimpses of that for me this week, and I, and I need to be really intentional about it. We get an insight of what it is that burdens somebody, and it affects how you see them. And then when it affects how you see them, you're incredibly careful. You're incredibly careful how you choose what to say, and when to say it, and how, and how to say it. And there's times that for, for some of us, I definitely for me, there's times that I need to hear the truth. There's times that we, maybe that is, maybe hard truths, if that's the right language to use. There's times that we need to hear that. But how it is received, and I know it's the case for me, and I'm just imagining, like, forgive me for assuming, but I imagine it's for us all. How it is received um, will be connected to how the clarity, how clear, how clear the love is, how the clarity of our love and the long-term commitment I find it hard to receive truth from somebody who is just dipping in and out of my life. I find it hard to receive truth from somebody that I'm not truly sure actually loves me. And so that's a, that's, that's a challenge for that's the type of person that I want to be, not only how I would want to receive truth. As we're thinking about how we speak, that's what we're doing over these Sundays, thinking about how we speak, about the words that we use, and the, and the reality is, to sum it all up, and it's same old stuff maybe, same hat, but we need the community of faith, we need the church. Um, and I suppose taking this chance and Generation Sunday just to remind us all of that, we need, we need all of us working this out together, we need our kids, we need the older heads, we need everybody in the room um, to help us learn to speak again and that's what we are continuing to commit ourselves to and that's what I'm inviting you to commit continue to commit yourself to watching your words so the spirit has been poured out in order for uh, for the church to learn to speak again we really need the church we can't do this Lone Ranger can't do it on our our own Um, so rather than me trying to like go around in a circle here while I try to land this let me just finish praying father thank you for uh, this morning thank you for the chance to be together god we're so grateful for one another um thank you for thank you for the gifts the personalities thank you for um the joy the youngest to the oldest bring thank you for uh how vital god every person is vital to this body and uh and holy spirit i pray that you would um that you would affirm that in, in every person this morning, um, this afternoon. Um, as we go t- today, we pray that you would encourage us, you bless us, you continue to challenge us, confront us, comfort us, all of that, God. And uh, we need you, and we need one another. Uh, and maybe crassly, God, whether we like it or not, we need, we need one another. And um, so, God, I pray that you would continue to unite that we look as much like Jesus as we possibly can for your name's sake. Amen. Amen.